Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is TDS. Right. Um, TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. Um, probably the, the least mis- least understood uh, parameter of, of water balance. Um, kind of think, think of it this way. You have a pool filled with water. You're adding stuff to the pool, whether it's a sanitizer, clarifiers, algicides, whatever. People over the years. Um, all those things have inert materials to them that when they get into the water are solubilized. In other words, it's dissolved. You don't see it. After a certain length of time, your TDS level gets so high that um, you can start seeing problems, um, clues that your TDS level is high. Things like possibly cloudy water, slower chemical reactions. Just the water looks dull. That's the best way to put it. I mean, we've all been to a lake where the water shimmers on the top because the sunlight's hitting it kind of deal. But have we also been to lakes where Sunlight's hitting it, and it's just bleh. It's deadly dull. That's because there's high TDS. There's so much TDS in the, in the water that literally it's absorbing the light, the UV light from the sun, and doesn't cause that, that sparkle. That's a terribly chemical term, sparkle. But, but that's what it is, okay? And, and um, over the course of time, and we're talking years now. We're not talking you know, a couple weeks or a month. We're talking 10-plus years. If there's a pool out there, that you know the water hasn't been completely changed out at least once. And that doesn't mean all at once one time, but even over the, a little bit over the course of time. Check the TDS level because things could possibly be happening, like, like I mentioned, slow chemical reactions, things like that. And um, the recommendation is anything greater than 1,500 parts per million above your incoming TDS, the water should be drained. And that's the only way you can lower it. And so you need to know what your incoming TDS is. So as an example, um, in the Baltimore area, it's about four to 500 parts per million out of the tap, which is pretty low. But that means I can go up to about 1,900, 2,000 parts per million TDS in a pool. I usually don't see it in spots because spots usually wind up draining. But in pools, before I would have to go, hmm, might need to drain a little bit of water you know, in order to, to, to bring it back to its sparkle, that kind of thing. <laughs> Um, I know, I know it's terribly terrible, but that's what it is. It, it sparkles. Um, you test TDS. You can test TDS a couple of different ways. And by the way, there's nothing that interferes with the TDS test. It's one of those few that has absolutely nothing. But you test TDS. You can do a drop test for it, but honestly, it takes a long time to do. And it's kind of pricey, I think, with what you have to do it with. The easiest way is with a meter, uh, whether it's a portable individual meter for TDS I don't know if you've seen those little black boxes with the white dish on top. Those are Myron L meters. Those things are practically indestructible. I've taken it at trade shows and thrown it against the wall. This thing won't die. Uh, we sell those. That's the only product that we resell that we don't make is Myron L meters. And um, that's, it's, it's, a great, it's a great instrument. Because with TDS, you, again, you don't need to know. I have 1,482.55 parts per minute. You don't need to know that. You just need to know a rough figure. I need to know what your incoming TDS is, too. And you can calibrate the oh easily yeah. and all that stuff, too. Absolutely, right? yeah. Calibrate it, clean it, that kind of thing. So, so TDS testing is, is pretty simple. Uh, you don't have to do it all the time. Once a year is usually good. I also recommend it if you have a brand-new customer in an area and that you don't know what the incoming water is like, do a TDS test so you know what your baseline is. Uh, it would be those kind of situations. But once a year is probably good enough. Yeah, especially in areas kind of like here where you're not draining the water a lot for whatever reason. Uh, it can build up over time. Yeah. So how do you think you best describe TDS to a homeowner? I want to know, ask him how long has the water been in the pool, okay, and what's been in the pool. So every, just tell them everything they've added to it, you know, treatment products, uh, chlorine, whatever, clarif- san- cyanuric acid, people, everything – Contributes Pets. to TDS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dogs. Dogs, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, dogs have more of an organic introduction into water that, that chlorine deals with more than, than TDS. But, yeah, depending upon the fur of the dog. Uh, I mean, my, my Alaskan Malamute has very, very thick fur. 
And if I threw him in the pool, number one, he wouldn't like it because he doesn't like water. But number two is that he's got a lot of stuff in his fur, uh, and it's going to contribute to the TDS level uh, as opposed to, say, a dachshund or something like that or a chihuahua. Because I think all those things, it's crazy how one thing affects everything because if, say, that hair is clogging up a main drain, clogging up an impeller, Mm -hmm. uh, the filtration system, any of that, Uh and it's slowing filtration down and you're having to add more chlorine tablets or run your pool longer, Mm -hmm. all these other things you're after adding to the pool over the course of years, yeah, Yeah. 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 you're, you know, you're raising all those levels because you're trying to fight it. And like you said... TDS, that's something that we can't change. There's no, no secret sauce. No can secret be added sauce. To the pool. No, no, no. <laughs> but so what is high TDS? How does that affect the sanitation of, or how what we're adding to the pool? Okay. It, it, like I mentioned earlier, the only thing it's really going to do is, is slow down chemical reactions. So, for example, if you had a high TDS level and you were adding uh, chlorine to, to do breakpoint chlorination, for example, or shocking, regular shocking, it might, it might, it will take longer to do that than it would if the TDS was in the right amount of range. Or it might not work at all in some really extreme cases. So that's that's your your signal. That's your flag that goes up. That you take, can see. take more of it? it not more of it, but what, you, what you've calculated that you needed to add doesn't do the job. You know, you needed, say, five pounds of cowhide, but throw it in, and nothing happens. You know, it doesn't clear it up. Check your TDS level, particularly if the water looks dull. And that's that's probably the reason high TDS, yeah, yeah. You can't feel high TDS. It doesn't hurt you. It's just, it affects all the chemical reactions in the water. So when when you have a salt pool, mm-hmm. and the salt readings are obviously you know whatever the ranges are supposed to be thirty two mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. five thousand on certain meters, right? How does that you know? Because usually when you read that, the TDS level is sky high, right? Right. So, right. A little bit different with with, with these syst- with the salt pools. Um, remember when I said the recommendation is don't let it get 1,500 parts per million above your incoming? If you're dealing with, with a salt system, find out what the, what the salt requirement is for that particular unit. Like say it's 2,500 parts per million. You add the salt, the salt need uh, value to your TDS uh, to that 1,500. So if you had a 2,500 part per million salt system, 2,500 plus 1,500 is 4,000. You could go up to 4,000 parts per million before there would be a problem. Why, why is the TDS level higher on salt pools? Because TDS is, comp- again, comprised of a lot of stuff, and a lot of it's chlorides, sodium chloride. About, and roughly about, if I remember the number right, about 47% of a TDS value is as a chloride. So it could be sodium chloride, potassium chloride. could be a couple other different kinds of chlorides in there. But it's it's a I mean it's something you're adding to the pool, right? So I mean it's right. just raising that mm-hmm. TDS level because right. it's a, everything you add to the pool. You're yeah. just adding so much right. salt and it raises it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why it's important to use the right grade salt for these systems. Pool grade salt. Yeah. Not go to the store and buy table salt. You can take Morton salt and board. <laughs> I think you heard of d- people that... does make a pool <coughs> pool salt. I have, yeah. I have heard of that. Yeah. Have you heard of the like homeowners that have uh Kind of like the, uh, I don't know what do you call it, like the salt systems in their home for like when they take showers and things like that, mm-hmm. and they have it like almost plumbed in to their autofill to mm-hmm. where that's the water they're returning yeah. back into the oh, pool. Water softeners, mm-hmm. water softeners, water yeah. softeners. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't recommend them for, for for pools and spas because they're not really designed to to be worked with that. But for home systems like for laundry and and cooking and things like that and showers and stuff, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they're they're fine. But yeah, and uh, and that. Then the kind of salt you use for that is very similar to pool grade salt. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting because you should probably, yeah, because if it's off the autofill, you'd think that they should just shut that off and either, you know, have that line to another one or something. Because putting that back into the pool, that doesn't seem, yeah. especially if there's not a you know a salt generator. Yeah, I think yeah. they usually bypass it, or you know, you have to replace the salt mm. like every so often because it. It uses all the salt part of it. Do what now? In the, like in the if house? You're, if you're filling up a pool, like you need to replace the salt every so often in those water softeners to, so that it actually does its job. And you have to do it like six times to do to fill up a pool. Or something. Oh, I know. Yeah. I used to have to fill ours up <laughs> uh-huh. at my dad's house all yeah. the time. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy because there's some houses that have like insane freaking salt 
like mm-hmm. readings and they don't have a salt generator mm-hmm. and they never had a salt generator mm-hmm. and it's just crazy. Yep. It'll just mm-hmm. be like freaking sky high. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, 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 all right. Well, <laughs> sure what so do you want a salt generator? Yeah. yeah right. You really? Want Your water's it. good. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. We truly appreciate you giving us your time and your ear. We know how important and valuable that is. So thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can reach us at poolchasers.info at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our tag is Pool Chasers. If you guys could take a minute and go to Apple Podcasts to rate and review the podcast, we would truly appreciate it. See you out there, Pool Chasers. chasers.